Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. If you're new here, I started an open source project for a pick and place machine, which very precisely puts electronic components onto circuit boards. And over the past couple years, I started a company selling them. If you want to start from the beginning, you can click here to catch up. So we've got a ton of machines out in the field now, and every day people are using them to actually populate boards, products that they're either making for their hobby or project or company or all kinds of stuff. For feeders or whatever you're using to hold the tape or feed it up to the head, supplying the parts for the machine. Right now the main option is strip feeders where there's pretty much a section of the build area where there's some tape laid out in a little 3D printed mount and the film is removed and the machine can just go and pick through all the parts that are available. These are really simple to set up and they're effectively free as it really just costs one 3D printed part and like a couple pieces of hardware just to mount it to the staging plate. However, these do require manual reset setting. Ideally, you can just pull the tape through and reset it in OpenPMP really easily, but some jobs that have a lot more components, it's a little bit more manual. We've designed powered feeders that solve this problem super well with a couple motors and a whole communication protocol, and we're in the middle of tweaking and tuning that design right now. I actually have a proto board. Let me go grab it. Ah. Here it is. We've cut down the board size a ton, which saves a lot of money. And also because the actual mechanics of the feeder are no longer involved in the PCB of the thing, it means that we can very easily change all kinds of things about the mechanical feeder design to tweak it and tune it, and we don't have to re-spin a PCB every time, which saves so much time. This proto is also intended to fix some connection issues that we were having with the previous spring fingers. It did work pretty well, but sometimes if it wiggled a little bit or some of the tolerance of some 3D printed parts made it so that the pins would disconnect, we're trying a different method here that also means that a lot thinner feeders can be implemented with the same feeder floor. So lots of cool improvements. And right now I'm just in the middle of trying to get this board to spin up so I can keep on prototyping with it. I'll have a video about this real soon. But while we're in the middle of getting this design tuned, a ton of people in the community have been working on passive feeders and the result is really cool. Passive feeders are designs that don't require communication back to the controller or power or motors or really much of anything. They're just fancy shapes that very creatively allow the existing hardware of the machine to advance tape forward. It's so awesome. Like pretty much everyone is very creative little hack. There are a good amount of passive feeder designs that already exist out there. Here's a few of them. They're really cool, but none of them have been adapted for the Lumen PMP yet. But some folks in Discord have been posting their own designs for doing passive feeders. And one of the people that kicked off this thread was Jazzy Chad. Jazzy Chad posted this picture on Discord and it really made me start thinking about how could we just very quickly and easily make a little passive feeder design. He ended up posting a whole bunch more progress pics of him going through and trying to tweak it. The general idea of the design is that the nozzle tip goes into the hole in the tape and it pulls it forward. And that action of pulling the tape forward actually makes some gears move that peels the film off all just passively, all coming from just the motion of pulling the tape forward. Really, really cool. As a result, I hopped into CAD and tried to make my own version of it. And after like a few different versions of tweaking, I got something that works. First off, let me just show you how the actual working one works. So you put a spool on the backside and you take the tape and you feed it in through the little slot opening. And you can see as I move it through, the gears are actually turning because the tape is interfacing with little pips on one of these gears and it's making the whole thing rotate. After I get the tip of the tape into one of these openings, I'm gonna take the film and I'm gonna peel it back and I'm gonna feed it into the interface between these two gears. And then now it'll grab it and pull it taut. So because the gears actually pull more film than tape per rotation, I can actually just twist this and you'll see that it will pull the film to right up against the printed edge. And this is done to ensure that there's never any slack in the film. We always pull a little bit more film per gear rotation than tape, because if there's ever any slack, then it can get in the way of picking apart. So it's important that we pull just a little bit more. But the really cool part about it is all this happens just by pulling the tape forward. sick. And this uses about, I don't know, 30 cents in plastic and three bolts. <laughs> now in order to get here, I went through quite a tuning process. And these are all the different prototypes that I made before I got to something that worked. To start out, I just wanted to test and see if like the general principle of the thing could work and whether or not I could print gears that would rotate well when the tape is pulled through. But I did realize that a lot of my dimensions were wrong and that I really need a second bar on the other side to hold either side of the gear. Because if I just have it on one, the rotation doesn't work very well. This one is starting to get close where I actually put a bar on either side of the gears so they were held straight. It was still a bit of a tight interface between the gears. It wasn't letting the film 
them slide through when necessary. Also the pathway for the tape to go through is much bigger and it's a ton less resistant, so it's much easier for it to actually be pulled through. And then the second to last one, I made the interface even bigger so these rotate really easily and they totally let film slide through, but still give it enough friction that it'll peel it back. And everything's in PET-G now. And I find that the surface of PET-G allows a little bit more slippage of the film and it makes it so it's even easier to pull the tape through. It's great. And I actually have printed a good number of these already. <laughs> but of course, none of this matters if it doesn't actually work on a machine. It works. I've been testing this mainly with tape that has 0805s in it, but when I try and test it with 0603s, the tape will kind of slide through and the, the teeth that are supposed to go in the holes don't quite engage with it. I think this is actually because that the tape that 0603s come in is actually a little thinner than 0805s and same thing with 0402s. They all have a little bit different thicknesses. So I'm trying to figure out how to tweak it so that it'll work with every thickness of paper tape. I also still have to test plastic tape and a whole bunch of other things. I've got a lot of testing still to do, but so far it's a super good sign. The community has been totally running with it. Also from Discord, Cordy Moto has a design that's similar to this and it looks great and it works super well. Jazzy Chad has actually added a peg to the second head of his machine and that's actually what's used to move the tape forward so it's not putting that much force on the nozzle tip. Many pick and places actually have a solenoid with a pin that's used to do the same kind of thing. Also a ton of people in the community have been modifying an existing feeder design called the 0816 to work for the Lumen PNP. Nick Molly did the original modifications to the 0816 feeder to work with the Lumen PNP and it looks stellar. And then Infinite NES Lives made some further modifications to it and also adapted it to work with all tape widths. These feeders are a little funky to control because they each need their own PWM servo control pin and they don't have a microcontroller on board. So Curly Tail Games is making a shield that goes onto an Arduino Mega that lets you pretty much control a whole bunch of them all from that one Arduino. Atanasoft has been working on a script that automatically lets you import a board from KiCad into OpenPNP with a ton less manual configuration. It's super cool. And they're also diving into some interesting QR code stuff. So I'm super interested to see what they come up with there. But in the meantime, I'm going to be working on the Rev 6 of the feeder that has all of the tunes and tweaks that we learned from doing some lifetime testing on Rev 5. It does work darn well, and we did use it in production for a good long time, but it's not quite in the place where I feel comfortable shipping it yet. Not as reliable as I want it to be. If you're interested in poking around in the design for this feeder, I'm going to put it up on GitHub shortly, probably in a separate repository. I still have some tuning and tweaks I want to do before I put it out there. And if you're interested in taking a look at any of the community mods that people have made, there's a whole page where you can take a look at everything that anyone in the community has made and wanted to share. There's a lot of really cool ones in there. I highly suggest you go take a peek. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you're new here, I started an open source project for a pick and place machine, mother f